Hey guys, so in this video we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, how can I learn how to write exceptional CSS? So let's get into it. Well, that is going to be tricky. It's going to be really tricky for you to learn how to write this sort of thing. Uh, I will give you the tips that I can give you that has helped out me, helped me quite a lot. And then hopefully that that's going to be good enough for you. But you should know that writing exceptional CSS, I mean, the first thing we need to ask is what is exceptional CSS? Because if you consider exceptional CSS to be the sort of thing that you see on on like on these showcase website like JS Fiddle or JS Bin and these sorts of things or code pen. Uh, usually you what you should know there is that that's not necessary. That sort of CSS is usually, it's usually a design type of thing. A, and having a good understanding of design is the thing that will make you the sort of person who can produce truly beautiful uh, interfaces. So study like going really, really hard on design is more important than actually learning CSS because CSS is just a way for you to express good design in that scenario. But if we go with my personal take on what exceptional CSS is, uh, I, it's a bit, bit of a different story. Now my personal take on what C exceptional CSS is, has more to do with the maintainability of CSS because that is the true challenge of CSS. You see, even a person who doesn't really have a good understanding of good design, if you work within front-end development, unless you are a web designer, you are going to have artboards. You're going to be provided with some visualization of what it is that you're supposed to be building. And as I said, if you are the designer, if you are the web designer in this scenario, then that's a different story. But then you basically need a full education or at least a very strong flair for how to design something that looks intuitive and looks, it looks beautiful, right? But you will face the same problem even if you have that understanding as most of the industry has. And that is to maintain CSS over time, to scale it to a truly large size. Because the sad little truth is that CSS is super easy when you're building something from scratch and you're likely going to build something that is fairly simple. The challenges with CSS is to design it in such a way that it maintains that simplicity over time because as you progress through things, more and more complexity is added to your components or to your UI. And with just a, like it doesn't ha require much. You just need to fuck up in one section of the UI for that decision to start to cascade and snowball on you into something that becomes legacy. Because such a thing, it can be a simple, simple, simple little thing. An example would be to, let's say that you put a default styling on a span. You just decide that every span, for whatever reason, is going to have a padding of two pixels. You might have use of that for your story and the components you're building right now. And then in six months, somebody realizes that, damn, I need to make a span now that doesn't have that padding. Can you remove it and just redo that? No, you're stuck. The only th option you have is pretty much to either rewrite the whole application or all the places, find every single place on the entire website that uses a span and remove that styling, or you can override it. And that is usually what people do. And the problem with that is that then the third next person comes along and realizes that, damn, your overrides, they're not going to work for me. I need to override, uh, override those overrides as well. And then it's kind of, that's like, yeah, that's the problem with CSS. It just, the problem grows the more you hack it together. And so figuring out, like really, really learning how to fix this sort of issue is the thing that is going to make or break, the, like it's going to be the thing that, that makes the difference in how good you are, at least in my book, um, when it comes to CSS. Apart from, of course, actually knowing how all of the properties work so that you really have a, I mean, going to MDN or learning about CSS and like studying all the properties and just practicing, I hope that is fairly clear to us that practice makes perfect, right? But apart from really knowing how all the properties work and really, really going into, I mean, you can go to CSS tricks and look at all the blog posts about different CSS 
properties and uh, techniques and so forth, which I highly recommend that you should do because that's just knowledge. But apart from that, having a understanding of the problems that CSS will bring with it and having a CSS architecture like SMAX, object-oriented CSS or BEM is also something that you should consider because one of the things that some quite a lot of people forget when you work at a larger company or like a larger project is that you're not the only person contributing code, which means that that is also part of the problem that you need to solve because you cannot introduce a way of working or like create, I've seen this a hundred times, I don't know how many standard color pa um, palettes, uh, color palettes I have seen or I have with my, I think it's six or seven files with the name standard colors or colors. It's, yeah, you know, the, and this is like a symptom of that problem where you think that it's about you. You think that if you just figure out a way of working that works for you, and, uh, and then the people are going to follow suit. I don't, it's, it's almost cute. It's so naive to see all these people coming up with another utility, uh, utility function or something like, oh, it's going to be really useful and everybody's going to use it. No, they're not. They are not. It actually is, it's actually extremely hard to design something if it's a, ut uh, it's a utility class or whatever. It's really hard to design something. It doesn't even have to be in C just CSS, but just having something that people feel like, oh yeah, I'm gonna use this, this is really useful. To just get that to happen, it's a really tricky thing because people are accustomed to working in a certain way and figuring out how to make sure that everybody aligns on the way that we should work is actually a big challenge. And if you can master that and write CSS in such a way that people who come after you can actually continue your work or to uh, are able to actually extend on the functionality that you have added, that's the thing that's going to be the most, most uh, useful to the company. Because getting something to look a certain way, that's one thing. But being able to do that with maybe like tons of, with tons of people contributing over a long period of time and still maintain code cleanliness and maintainability, that is the real challenge of CSS. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to learn how to write truly exceptional CSS, the first and foremost thing you need to do is to, of course, learn CSS. So you can go and read the blog post, or sign up to the CSS newsletters and practice, 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 because you need to know all the properties and the different techniques to setting up a layout that doesn't rot, to set up, uh, to do coloring and paddings and like box sizing and all of these different things that makes, uh, makes up the the ecosystem of CSS properties. That's number one, just to know the skills. The second part is to learn a architecture of some sort. In other words, object-oriented CSS, SMAX or BEM or something of this nature, so that you can create a pattern that is able, that it, where it's possible to follow along. There's a set of rules for how you should write your CSS. And then lastly, you need to really have a think about how to design your UI components in such a way that they're simple enough and extensible enough that other people can come after you and really kind of immediately understand that, okay, this is how this works and then I can just add my stuff, stuff in. Usually that is the trickiest part of CSS because I can promise you that if you fuck it up when you first write the CSS, the CSS that you want and you commit that and send it out into cyberspace, you've already fucked up the project and it's very likely that the person who comes in after you is not going to do the Boy Scout thing and fix the things that you fucked up. They're just going to add to the mess that you just made. That's the biggest challenge that you're going to face. I'm sorry to say. Have a great day.